Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about 5 roles in software development that might be evergreen and that are very hard to hire for today. Since they are hard to hire for, whenever someone is interviewing for them, the interviewee has a lot of leverage because there aren't a lot of people who know this technology and also whenever the company is hiring, they desperately need for this role. So in this video, let's understand what these slightly unconventional roles are and what you should do to go beyond full stack development and have a lot of leverage when you're negotiating. Let's get right into the video. The first role is being a designer plus front-end developer. So you're not a pure designer who cannot code. You're not a very bad and shabby looking front-end developer who can write front-end code but doesn't have design skills. So a combination of both of these. See, companies will basically have to hire two people for this. This is conventionally how it happens in the industry. You have a design team, a dev team, but this is a role that is very intermingled. A few people I've seen who have extremely good design skills, which means they can go into Figma and create good designs. And they can also just write the basic components. You don't have to write complete full stack code or even touch the majority of React code. As long as you can give a simple API to other developers who can wire up your components, you're good to go. So what is the skill? Designer plus developer. What do you need to know? You need to have good design skills. Should be able to create mockups and maybe actual designs in Figma and then convert them into React components. You don't have to wire it up to the main React app. As long as you can create them in either storybook or just write decent docs on each and every component you're writing, the front-end team can take it over and actually integrate it to the app. Why is this good? Because in the real world, there's like a lot of back and forth and context switching that happens between designers and developers, especially the front-end team and the design team. So if there's a single person who can handle both the things, there's a lot of context switching time that's taken over. And other than the fact that you're saving the team financial resources by combining two skills, you're also saving a lot of context switching time, which is great in a fast-paced environment. So what's the first one? Designer plus developer. Let's move to the second one the second one is a mobile app developer who can do everything what do i mean by everything i mean they can create android apps they can create ios apps they can hopefully create some apple watch maybe that's not needed but basic android and ios apps you can create write it in native swift or java kotlin whatever and you are comfortable with flutter and react native as well if you've built an app in each one of these deployed it on the app store or the play store you're basically good to go you can handle end-to-end -end frameworks for any company because most companies use one of these four frameworks and this is something the company wants someone to just take over and completely own. As I've said before, companies will slowly move to smaller and niche hiring and I can totally see this role being extremely relevant because apps are not going anywhere and you need someone to handle them. Maybe you use an AI to code it, maybe you code it yourself. But as long as you understand all four of these, which is Swift, Java or Kotlin, React Native and Flutter, and you've actually deployed an application end-to-end -to, -end to the App Store and the Play Store, you have enough knowledge to own this stack for the team and this stack isn't going anywhere. So if you are interested in mobile app development or you already do mobile app development in Android or iOS, try to inculcate all four of these skills and you can be a one person army when it comes to at least the mobile app for the team. With that, let's move to the third point, which is actually being a one person army in full stack, which means you completely own the front end code and the back end code. A very popular stack here is the Mern stack. I think engineers today have enough knowledge, context and an AI to help them code. Uh, again, I'm not saying this will become a one person thing, but if you can own this stack completely, which is the React code for front end and whatever the back end code might be in, you have strong leverage over someone who is just a backend developer or just a frontend developer. A lot of times during your day, uh, when you're in a company, there's no backend work for like the next few days. Uh, if you're a pure backend developer, then it'll be hard for a company to find re time or resources for you to work on, which is why if you can do both, it's much more appealing as an employer versus if you can just very strictly do one. So don't keep that door closed. And mostly I've seen here people do backend and React is where a lot of backend people don't like working on. It's a skill just inculcate it. Uh, you don't have to do that completely full time or do the design thingy, but you should have enough context and knowledge to take up uh, front end tasks in case you're done with backend for a few days. So what is the role? Being a one person army and having all the context of both front end and back end code. This feels like I've made a very generic point, be a full stack developer. More or less, yeah, this one's like fairly generic. Be a full stack developer. Point number four, here you should be the CI CD guy or like the DevOps guy, but you should have code awareness. The reason I say this is I've seen a few CI CD developers are like people who do DevOps who only purely understand DevOps. They don't want to touch the application code or they don't want to look into it. They need a lot of context from the React developer or the backend developer while building the CI CD pipeline. I I've seen one such person who fucking knew everything backend, frontend, even like <laughs> pure WebRTC stuff he had done in, in one of the teams that I was working in. And he owned, like he was actually part of the infra team, but he had context of the code throughout. He did not have to work on full stack, 
but he never really needed to ask someone for any guidance when a new service was built or a new front end was written he would just take over and deploy the thing on the internet so if you're a devops guy great but it is good for you to have knowledge outside of devops so be a devops guy and do that on a day-to-day -day basis but if you have enough context you can one if let's say be like the superhuman which a few people have like you a few companies have which is if something goes down and no full stack engineer or like backend engineer is up if you're the devops guy and you fixed backend engineers that's very prime skill to have that's great as a owner of the company to have a person like this in the team who was hired as a devops person but if things go down at night at 2 a.m and everyone else is sleeping and he's up he can still take over application code and fix the bugs if you're a devops guy don't shy away from application code i know it, it does not look appealing at all when you're in devops uh, like looking at application code or like it seems beneath you uh, which it totally might be but uh, at the same time if you can at least understand java node.js python whatever the application code is written in you can be that 10x engineer and it's always good to have 10 next engineers around. Let's move to the fifth point. This one's good. Uh, this one's the developer productivity slash the person who writes tests. Now, historically, like writing tests seems like people are like, oh, testing engineers at the very bottom of the pyramid or like AI will firstly replace the testing folks. So people who write tests might be true, um, but this role is slightly different. This is you be the developer productivity guy. There's a term for it that I'm forgetting, but this guy, one, cleans up code all around. Two, basically makes the developer's life easy. So if there are 10 developers in the team and they are going through a workflow that's unoptimal. I'll give an example here. Let's say the build pipeline takes 20 minutes right now. The person who reduces the build time from 20 minutes to two minutes is the developer productivity guy. He has to be extremely knowledgeable. Uh, one, this is a very niche skill. Not a lot of people sort of do this. And two, this is also like extremely ugly work. It's like cleaning after everyone else. So most people I've seen don't like doing this, but this person is like extremely useful and efficient and cost saving for the team because the code that they write sort of affects 10, 20 engineers in the team. And if you can save like 10 minutes of 20 engineers, that's a lot of time. So what does this person do? They write a lot of pipelines uh, to make sure whenever someone is creating a pull request, the code has extremely strict checks. So people can't just merge things in unless they're extremely well linted, all the tests are passing, things like these. They also do things like uh, building things the right way. For example, if your backend takes 20 minutes to deploy from your GitHub to the actual backend where the deployment is happening, uh, they try to decrease that time. They work on moving from very high level frameworks. Let's say you have a monorepo in Lerna. They move it from Lerna to something like Turbo Repo. So they take very high level architectural decisions such that the complete team is sort of unaffected and they basically make code changes in each and every module without affecting the workflow of the existing team. One another task that I can think that they can do is moving the code base from JavaScript to TypeScript. A person like this, a person who's open to challenging problems and they don't commit too often, but when they do, they change the structure of the repo. That's the developer productivity guy. I've seen the same person that I was talking about in the last section. He eventually moved to a developer productivity role. He basically had context of the complete code. He was in infra for the longest time, then moved to developer productivity and sort of was cleaning up the code for everyone else. Frankly, very extremely indispensable skill. You only see its outcomes when your code sort of grows a lot. But if you're in a company, hopefully that will stay for alive for the next 10, 20 years. You need to do a lot of cleanup and clean technical debt. And that's the job of this person. This person also has a lot of context. So if they don't have something to do someday, they can also hop into front end, back end, wherever and sort of help out there. Five niche roles that I feel are extremely popular. I could have gone with a standard AI machine learning or like WebRTC engineer, but I guess you guys already know this. These are more full stack related roles. These are slightly more than full stack. This is not just simple writing front ends, back ends on the website. I'm not saying everyone can do, but that's easier to do and which is why it's easy to hire for as well. These are slightly harder to hire for. I've personally seen it's, so I put out a LinkedIn post that we are hiring mobile engineers. The post got like 20,000 uh, impressions or something. Around 200 people applied and two people got interviews. So. It's literally mobile engineers are hard to hire, especially mobile engineers who've done everything, have deployed apps and were able to showcase that to me on the email, just to people. So it might feel like the world is filled with engineers, but these niche high skilled engineers, these are skills that take at least a year to inculcate, if not more. These aren't things you can get from a bootcamp. I don't think anyone teaches this, which is why hard to hire for, which is why a lot of leverage when you're interviewing. Cool. That's the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.